Hello, uh, my name is Jun Tongfang. Today I would like to present our work, Parallel Partition, Proving Blockchain Resilience to Network Partition. This work is done by me, Fazal, and others from uh, HPAP in University of California, Irvine. The talk is organized with following sections. First, we will discuss the background and motivation of Parallel Partition. Then we will show how Parallel Partition solved the problem. Next, we'll discuss some threat that can affect the integrity of the ledger. And finally, we will evaluate our work uh, and compare it with some traditional blockchain like Bitcoin. The most exciting thing about blockchain is that uh, the whole world agrees on the same chain without relying on a single point of data source. Um, everyone can participate in storing and writing data, but still can reach a uh, global consensus. However, uh, it relies on the globally connected network, and the design of the blockchain cannot tolerate a global scale network partition. So imagine a solar stone breaks the submarine cable uh, between America and other continents. The network will be partitioned uh, into two regions and America cannot communicate with others. As a result, a fork will happen in blockchain where America has its own branch and other continents will work on the other branch. So what happened after networks is recovered? Branches from two regions will be broadcast to each other, but because of the longest chain rule of blockchain, only the longer branch will be considered the main chain. The shorter branch just disappear, meaning all transactions happen during the partition are not recorded. In the example, we only see one block from the shorter branch being dropped, but what if the network partition lasts for a longer time, one week or even one month? Lots of transactions just disappear, while most of them are already considered committed and the actual trades already have finished. Now we will talk about the system design of a parallel partition. The goal of our system is to preserve all progress during a network partition. It is done by designing a blockchain that supports splitting and merging. It also needs to ensure the integrity of the ledger. For example, make sure that there is no conflicting transactions. We carefully analyze the new thread introduced by our new design and provide solutions to them. We adopted a design from Basecoin that combines Byzantine fault tolerance BFT with blockchain for stronger consistency. The main idea is that every new block will be verified and signed by a dynamic consensus group. The new block will be considered committed once being signed without waiting for uh, several blocks after it. Uh, in Basecoin, the group is formed by miners of previous W blocks and the miner of the new block itself. Here, the window size W is 3, so block D will be signed by three previous miner, A, B, C, and itself D. We use the signature as a global uh, recognizable identifier for the status of network. We'll see how to do that in the next slides. When a network partition happens, the new block may not reach uh, everyone in the consensus group so it will be signed by only part of the group. When a block with less than W minor is published, every node in that region knows that the network has been partitioned, and they can identify which branch they are working on with the signature of that block. Also, the hash power of that region can be estimated with the number of signers. For example, uh, minor A, B, E year after partition, they are in one region and minor E minus the new block capital E. The consensus group of E should be B, C, D, but now it can only reach B. So block capital E will be signed by only uh, B. Now A, B, E can identify their branch with the signature of block E, and the branch size is one, uh, which has one third of the consensus group. In this way, the chain will be split into branches after partition, and each region will have exactly one branch. To merge uh, multiple branches after the network recover, we introduce a merging block that can have multiple parents. Um, after network recovered, miners can receive all branches, and they will create a merging block that points to uh, each of the branches. 
the consensus group is selected from uh, each branch according to the branch size. Here, uh, merging block A points to both uh, branches. The size of the upper branch is 1 uh, from the previous slides because the first block only has one signer. So we pick one minor B. Uh, similarly, lower branch has size 2, so we pick minor CD. So the consensus group of A will be BCD and the window size is 3 now. With the design of uh, panel partition, one region will have exactly one branch and all of them will be merged after recovery. So we can save all transactions during the partition. In the next section, we are going to discuss some new thread introduced by the split and merge design. So um, the first thread is completing transactions. Transactions are selected from a mining pool to be included in the new block. Since the mining pool is not cleared of the partition, miners from different regions can pick, still pick the same uh, transactions and include it in different branches, which will result in the conflicting transactions. So to solve this problem, we require all transactions to include the signature of first block in the branch as the identifier. So one transaction can only be included in one branch. The second one um, is what account used in different, reg uh, in different regions. Um, multiple people can use the same account in different regions, so they can span all of the balance in multiple branches. It's similar to double spending. To avoid this, uh, the wallet will be also partitioned uh, when the chain is split. For example, in the branch with one third of the consensus of minor, one account can only spend up to one third of its balance, so it cannot spend more than what it has across multiple branches. Um, there are two more threads in our paper, uh, inactive consensus miner and maliciously creating a branch without partition. So check it out if you are interested. Lastly, we will have the evaluation section. To evaluate the performance of pallet partition, we run experiments on a, a blockchain simulator called SimBlock. We cut down the connections between America and other continents, so there are two regions. America has one third of the total hash power, while the others has two thirds. First, we will show how pallet partition behaves uh, under different events. The axis here is a time series. Network partitions happens around 8 hours while it recovers after around 16 hours. The y-axis uh, shows the number of blocks of each branch. We can see that the main branch, uh, the main chain split into two of the partitions. The growing rate of America, the red line is half of the rate of the others. After network recovers, the two branches merge into one, and the new block generated in both, both branches are included in the main chain. Then we are going to uh, compare the performance of parallel partition with traditional uh, blockchain like Bitcoin. The x-axis here is still the time series, but for the y-axis, we show the number of wasted blocks, uh, which are blocks that are mined but not included in the main chain. So the red line is parallel partition. We can see few uh, wasted blocks because some blocks are competing for the signing procedure but there is no change when the network recovers. For Bitcoin, uh, around 15 blocks are instantly wasted after the network recovers because all of the blocks from the shorter branches are dropped. In conclusion, uh, Palo Partition is a blockchain system that can tolerate network partition. The main goal of it is to preserve all works during the network partition while still ensuring the integrity of the ledger. So this is the end of our presentation. Thanks very much for your listening.